we're going to be back in the book of Psalms again. And I try to get a psalm every now and then to put on here. And Psalm 22 is a crucifixion psalm. It's one of the best psalms there is. So Psalm 22 and verse 1. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me from the words of my roaring? So when our Lord Jesus Christ hung on the cross for our sins, what were some of the words that came out of his mouth? He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Just like Psalm 22, 1. And you see that in Matthew twenty-seven forty-six and Mark fifteen thirty-four, He said this because during this time, the Lord took the cup of wrath and poured it on his son. And the torments of eternity in hell were placed on him. Every sin ever committed from Adam and Eve to the last sinner who will ever be born was dumped on the Savior. He became sin for me even though he knew no sin. He became sin for me even though he did no sin. He became sin for me even though he was the Lamb of God who was without blemish and without spot. The sinner burning in hell right now is forsaken. He's saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Jesus took our hell on the cross so that you wouldn't have to be forsaken by God. You just have to accept the payment that he paid. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring? The sinner in hell is crying and begging God for one more chance. The Lord is far from helping him. He has now entered into a place that doesn't know anything about the love and mercy of God. He has now entered into a place where the anger of God is kindled. Deuteronomy 6.15 And the Lord won't listen to the words of his roaring, as he is seeking, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. But the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ took this hell for you. It says in verse 2, O my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. Jesus cried in the day and night on the cross, but there was temporary separation between him and the Father. In verse 3 it says, But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. The Father is holy, and for that temporary time, the sins of mankind were poured out on Jesus Christ, and God judged the sins of man on his Son. For that temporary time, the spotless Lamb of God was counted as a sinner. The preaching of the cross almost sounds blasphemous at times, because Jesus Christ, the perfect God-man, became sin. He became a serpent on a pole. And we don't like to think about Jesus Christ being a serpent lifted up. That almost seems blasphemous to us, but he became that for us, and that's what the Bible says. In verse 4, it says, Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. You can be delivered from the worst situations. You can be delivered from tribulations. You can be delivered from hell. But it has to be before you get to hell. Once you're there, you're there for eternity. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. That's a picture of man in hell. He's a worm, and he's without hope. He can no longer be delivered. And Jesus Christ said, when he's on the cross, but I am a worm and no man. And John 3, 14 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Jesus is the serpent on a pole. Look at him and you're healed. Just like the children of Israel, when they were bit by the serpents, they looked to that serpent on a pole and they were healed. Jesus became a worm. He became sin personified. And in the lake of fire, you'll get the body of your father, the devil. He is a serpent. And the Pharisees were called serpents. They were called a generation of vipers. 
The carcasses of the sinners in the lake of fire will be a worm. Isaiah 68, 24, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So you see, Jesus became sin. He said, But I am a worm. And man, in his worst state that he could ever get to, in the lake of fire will be a worm. He'll get a body like his father, the dragon. Psalm 22, 7. And they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, the people looked at him in disgust. They shook their head back and forth like he was a low-down dog. It says they shake the head, saying he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. In Matthew 27, 40, when Jesus Christ was on the cross, they said, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. So they're mocking him. They're daring him to come down. And that matches, he trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Now verse 9, But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breasts. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. There's your virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mary was found with child of the Holy Ghost, Matthew 1.18. And Psalm 22, 10 says, I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Jesus Christ was virgin born. He's God manifest in the flesh. It says in verse 11, Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. The wicked men that crucify the Lord Jesus Christ are the bulls and the roaring lions. Men are compared to beasts many times in the Bible. Second Peter 2.12 says, But these as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed speak evil of the things that they understand not and shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Jude verse 10, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Titus 1, 2, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, The Christians are always liars, evil beasts, slow bellies. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. In Luke 13, 31 and 32, The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto him, Get thee out and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, this is Jesus, go ye and tell that fox. Ecclesiastes 3.19, for that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them, as the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast for all his vanity. Psalm 22.14, I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. And when he's experiencing this on the cross, all of these bulls, these beasts, are staring at him, wagging their heads, mocking him, daring him to come down. He said, my bones are out of joint. His bones are out of joint, but none of them are broken. John 19, 36, For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled. A bone of him shall not be broken. He said in Psalm twenty two fourteen, I am poured out like water. The soldier pierced the side of the Savior, and water and blood came out. In John nineteen thirty four, But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. He said in verse 15, My strength is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. The Lord experienced extreme thirst on the cross. And in John 19, 28, it says, After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. 
just like the rich man in hell begged for a drop of water on his tongue in Luke chapter 16. It says in verse 16, For dogs have come past me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. Once again, you see it referring to people as animals. For dogs have come past me. Notice that when animals go after their prey, they have no mercy on the other animal. They eat it alive while it screams. And this is how they did the Savior of the world. They pierced his hands and his feet. John 19, 37, and again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And when he comes the second time, they won't crucify him again. But it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. Psalm twenty two seventeen. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me, but none of them are broken. You can see his bones. He's torn up so bad, but none of the bones are broken, so that the scripture's fulfilled. Verse 18, they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. They cast lots for the Lord's vesture, as it's revealed in Matthew 27, 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. But soon he's coming back in a vesture dipped in blood, and they shall look on him whom they have pierced. Revelation 19.13, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. He'll be the one shedding blood this time. 19 and 20, Psalm 22, 19 and 20, but be, thou far from, be, but be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. The Lord Jesus Christ's soul was made an offering for sin as he experienced an eternity of hell on the cross. Isaiah 53, 10 says, Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And he said in verse 20, Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. In John 19, 11, Jesus tells Pilate that he wouldn't have any power against him except it were given him from his Father which is in heaven. The power of the dog is the power of lost men because men are beasts like a dog. The power of the dog is the power of lost men that they had that was given them by the Lord to crucify the Son of God. They only got that power because God himself gave it to them so that Jesus Christ could die for the sins of the whole world. And my darling seems to be the soul of the Lord Jesus Christ. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Once again in Psalm 35, it is used in connection with the soul. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction, my darling from the lions. So my, the, the, my darling seems to be the soul of the Lord Jesus Christ. It could also be his bride. When he was on the cross, he's delivering his darling from the lions, from destruction. Psalm twenty two twenty one: Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. He said, Save me from the lion's mouth. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Where are the unicorns? They are in the third heaven. Horses with one horn that we ride back on at the second coming. So the Lord hears him from the horns of the unicorns. Pretty much saying he's hearing him from the third heaven. All the way up there where those horses are with the, uni with the horns on them. He's hearing him from all the way up there. Save me from the lion's mouth. For thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. Psalm twenty two twenty two. I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation while I praise thee. David says he would declare thy name unto his brethren. He isn't ashamed to speak the name of the Lord to his friends. In the midst of the congregation, the church, he will praise him. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. 
There is coming a time when all Israel shall be saved, and they will glorify the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, they are blind in part, but their eyes are going to be opened, and they're going to see that Jesus Christ is who he says he is. For he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard. The Lord is going to hear their cry, just like he did a million times before. My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Sometimes you ate and you couldn't get satisfied. And there is no true perfect meal on this earth. But one of these days, you will eat the perfect meal that will satisfy. The people that seek the Lord are the ones who will be satisfied. It's the ones who seek other things whose eyes are never satisfied. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. Psalm twenty two twenty seven. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. In the millennial kingdom, Everyone will abide by what the Lord says and come to worship before the Lord or pay the consequences. There will be an underground society against the Lord. I mean, the Lord's going to know about it. But they will still have to abide by the Lord's rod or else. Psalm twenty-two, twenty-eight: For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. Obviously, without question, this is referring to the millennial time period because he's not brought in his kingdom yet even though he has power right now to remove kings and set up kings and do whatever he wants according to daniel he still hasn't come down to take over to set on his throne in jerusalem yet psalm twenty two twenty nine: all they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship all they that go down to the dust shall bow before him and none can keep his own soul alive a seed shall serve him it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. This seed is the Lord's seed. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he made it possible for us to be born again. So the Lord generated us. The seed is accounted to the Lord for a generation. That's us. He, we're the seed. He gets the credit because it, he made it possible on the cross for us to be saved, to be born again, to become the Son of God. What did John say? Even them that believe on his name, he made it possible for us to be sons of God. The moment you believe the gospel, you're birthed into the family of God. You are a son of God. Psalm twenty-two thirty-one: 31, They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. They shall declare his righteousness it is His righteousness that made it possible for us to be born again. If you're saved, then you're part of the people that shall be born. They shall come and shall declare His righteousness unto a people that shall be born. When you got saved, you were born again. That second birth is even more real than your first birth. But this has been the crucifixion psalm, Psalm 22.